Hello folks, and this is Kiki, uh, doing the last game of the series, Army Man World at War Team Assault. Uh, this is not canon with the World at War series, but it is considered part of the World at War series, as you can see there on the left, uh, before I cut the screen off there. Uh, I figured you guys didn't want to see the uh, loading bar, so I edited it out. Anyway, uh, there are quite a few changes this time around. Uh, this time, instead of one soldier, you control two soldiers. Uh, also, the screen that you saw last thing I'll explain later, I, but this is just the basic boot camp part, so I figure I won't explain it yet. Uh, basically, as you can see, uh, it's not as uh, clangy as the World at War counterparts, but it also kind of stinks too because you can't do your run dive anymore. Uh, you may have noticed that, that every once in a while in my videos I'll do a run dive and that sort of thing. Also, the next thing you'll notice, we have a uh, fully auto, or rather semi-auto, uh, basically it fires about five bullets at a time now and also it has a limited range and you, you can't aim and also that's another uh, later thing it doesn't it's not a requirement for this boot camp and I will explain uh, what it means by linguistic skills later on once I actually get into the game itself but for right now we're just going to be playing as one character uh, Shed Ao here and pretty much he looks like the guy that's quite similar to the green rogue. Now, I believe this came out before green rogue, quite obviously, but I could be wrong there if someone wants to correct me. And this might spark the idea of what's going on. And like I said before, this is a part of the series, but it is not canon. In other words, it's not really a part of the storyline. Uh, so basically you're not that same soldier that rammed that poor Tan with his uh, big old carrier and you're not uh, Sarge. You are uh, an eight man squad and each man has a unique duty to do and like I said uh, since this is the boot camp I can't really explain it as properly because it won't let you change the characters. Uh, so when I get to the first uh, mission of this, I'll go through the details of explaining what each soldier does, what its stat, what it, their stat points are, uh, what and so forth and so forth. And for the pr primary purpose of the LP, uh, Shadow will be the uh, main guy that I use throughout the uh, LP, just because he's the uh, fastest character. And that'll be explained as well. Uh, that's the other incorporation that's uh, new for the gameplay mechanics. Each guy has a particular uh, moving speed. They also have unique combat skills. And uh, basically, as you can see, we're playing as Boomer here. And as I walk him around, he moves a lot slower than uh, Shadow. Shadow is uh, more of a marksman class, so he moves quicker. He's actually the fastest uh, play, player character you can play in the game. See, as you can see here, he just zooms by everything. So pretty much that's why I'm using him for the majority of the LP, is uh, pretty much to clear out everything. Also, the next part, like I said, no manual aim. And here we go with the grenade range. Everybody likes to see me throwing grenades. <laughs> so here we go. Let's see how the grenade mechanics go. As you can see, it's a little bit lower of an arc, but it is adjustable depending upon what range you throw the grenade in. Also, you can see that the uh, grenade uh, mark point moves semi-slower than its uh, other counterparts. Not the slowest in the Army Man series, but it is rather slow. And... Uh, Pretty much the entire game, uh, I'll be doing the uh, stand-up position. Unfortunately, this game kind of nerfed its difficulty in the fact that you can't adjust your uh, body position too easily. 
and made everything shootable from a standing position. And uh, one other gameplay change I want to talk about with the rifle uh, before we move on here is there's a limited range. It'll auto it'll auto aim past its range, but if you're just randomly shooting, it'll only stay in one position, and you can't adjust it. Uh, meaning that you can't set up ambushes, you can't aim your shots. Everything has to be you have to get a really good view of it before you can shoot it. Uh, but uh, 3DO did make the game mechanics a thousand times easier, so uh, it's not really a hindrance for this particular game, but it is kind of something that I figured I would address, because as many people know through my other LPs, I do like to manual aim a lot. So pretty much take it as you will. You have no manual aim, but you can fire five bullets at a time. <laughs> Versus you can manual aim it, and you can tap fire, or you can single shot at a time. And what I think happened between the final assault, or I mean, sorry, final front, lock and load, whichever you want to call it, and uh, this game is, they figured that since the shooting mechanics were too slow, this time they would give the players uh, a faster fire, firing gun, but at the cost of you don't aim. So, also, no more bayonet. Uh, oh, and here's another gameplay mechanic. Uh, instead of just running up to 50 cal and using it, we actually have to repair it before we can use it. Uh, Meaning this game has a class system of, you know, it has engineers, it has heavy weapons, it has uh, marksmen, vehicle drivers, all sort uh, spies. Uh, uh, and here's the TNT comparison. As you can see, we're kind of flying through this. The TNT is uh, pretty much, eight, as it said, about 8 seconds. Uh, I didn't really time it. I think it's more like 10 seconds than 8 seconds, but still. Also, I noticed something on top of these screen uh, pictures, and I'll try to get a good shot of what it was. Uh, I believe I tried earlier, but if I didn't, I talked through it. I apologize. But uh, what it says up top there is Green Army. Like I said, here's where I notice what it says here. Uh, I'll try to get it panned where you can see it a little bit more. Like I said, I'm not sure you can see it or not, but it says Green Army on the top of it. A little bit of an Easter egg, I suppose. Uh, and two people who's watched my previous LPs, uh, like I said, try to identify the Nobody's try attempted to identify what the significance of the designation of the PT boat is. No one's attempted to identify what c possibly class battleship that could be. And uh, I know that it's like, you know, it's f a fantasy style of a or uh, modification of it. And But kind of the, some of the destroyers look similar to a uh, 1942 or 1943 style battleship. Uh, what I'm talking about is the old NES arcade game. So if anyone wants to take a crack at that, they can. Uh, and as you can see here, also, weapons you carry affects your speed. Like right now, Boomer's carrying a bazooka, and then all of a sudden when he switches from a mortar, uh, he moves a little bit quicker. And then when we switch to a knife, he moves uh, almost as fast as Shadow. Uh, also, that's another... Good gameplay mechanic, I'll, I'll give it that. That's a good attempt. Also, the theme here is Team Assault, which means that both guys have to survive in order for you to complete the mission. Even if you can complete with one person, you need to have both guys at the end, or it'll lose. And here we go with the sniper rifle. Now, I'm going to fail horribly at zooming in and out, but... Uh, I never really saw much of a need to zoom in and out for this. So, uh, and Shadow is the marksman class, so he's the only one who, who can use uh, sniper rifles. 
Uh, there's a, a couple other marksmen as well, but uh, pretty much each we each weapon has like a limit of who can use what weapon. And like I said, I'll explain this in a later video uh, when I actually get into the game. But for right now, I'm just kind of messing around with sniper rifle and showing off. Uh, you might have noticed as well during the mortar firing that the mortars were moving a little bit slower than the grenades. I don't know why this is, and luckily there isn't an occasion where you need to get into mortar position that quick compared to Army Man World at War at the final stage, which I really hated, but anyway. Oh, it says, where is your partner again over here? See, that's just to stress that you need both guys over there for the mission to complete. And it'll nag you constantly about that. So we have to get them to the end point, which is over here. And then one of the missions. So this is key signing out for boot camp part one. And uh, later.